Shalom, 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 shalom. We greet each and every last one of you out there. Oh, oh boy. By way of internet. And uh, we hope that the ministry has been a blessing to you some way, somehow. Hallelujah. All right. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful Shabbat. We do humbly ask and request by the power of the Ruah that you would meet us here with your word. And let it bring about a transformation to those that desire it. We welcome the Holy Spirit in this place among your people. We want you to minister to us and have your way. Bless all the saints that are joining with us on this Shabbat in obedience to the in accordance to the commandment. Now we thank you for all things. We just want to honor you, y'all, in, in the life, the short period of life that we have. And we need your words to penetrate deep down in our soul to bring about a transformation to bring you glory. Uh, we bless you for all things. Speak to us your truth in the mighty name of Yahshua. Amen. Y'all may be seated, saints of the most high. We're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to talk about discernment today. Discernment. And I need y'all to listen to me. I need your undivided attention because, you see, without discernment, deliverance cannot be too effective. Are y'all hearing me? Without discernment. And, and no doubt, we all, um, believe it or not, we all think that we have a, um, a, a keen sense of discernment. Um, well, I want to prove to you how inadequate we are and, and how do we need to come on up to perfection. Is that all right? Uh, have you ever done something wrong and you knew it was wrong? What was your discernment? <laughs> Y'all hear me, Israel? What was your discernment? I mean, discernment is basically the ability to be able to judge right from wrong. Is that not so? Before we go on here for a second, Brother Shane, I want you to turn over to Luke, the 17th chapter. We got something coming up from the Holy Spirit now. Luke the 17th chapter start at verse 26 now I know the reason why it's just been dropped in my mind too last night I spoke a little bit about of course you know it seems like that I always flush out the worst in people of course I wouldn't be effective as a deliverance minister if I didn't bring out the things that are hidden in the heart is that right and, you know, the Messiah warned us and he told us that this earth would be in a certain condition. And these conditions must be up on this earth before he returns. Are y'all hearing me, Israel? Y'all with me this morning, Israel? Hallelujah. So if, if we're going to understand when the king is coming, we have to know the signs of the times. Is that all right? Amen. And you people out there, even though you're at home, you can still say amen. You can still say hallelujah, glory to the king. Hallelujah. 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 And we are, believe it or not, in those conditions amen. today. Yes, sir. And those warnings were there for a beacon. Amen. They're there for a light post to let us know. That just like when a, a piece of fruit is on a tree and has many stages that it has to go through in order for it to be ripe, yes, sir. Yes, sir. the same conditions that we are faced with today, Amen. the fruit is ripening Amen, sir. Yes, sir. to time of the harvest. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A lot of times when people see these conditions, are you following me? They affect people. They don't bother me whatsoever at all. Y'all haven't noticed my speech yes, a lot lately? Hey, yes, you, is that what you want to do? Have fun. Go ahead. Have at it. Amen. Can I tell y'all something about the Messiah that we follow here in this ministry that you may not be familiar with, but you walk in it without even knowing it? Can I tell y'all something? Y'all ready to hear? Y'all sure, y'all sure that y'all cleaned y'all cell before y'all came in those doors, right? Y'all did, right? You purged your conscience, right? Hmm? Find me one place in there 
where Jesus rebuked a common person for their sin. Find me one place in the gospel. I'm trying to bring us into perspective. Was not seeing all around him. Did he not see sin? Could he not recognize sin? Are y'all listening to me? Hallelujah. So what we have to do is we got to get into his mindset. And we need to figure out since he knew what sin was. And you know the conditions was bad in his day too. You know that he didn't walk around with blinders on. Y'all do know this, right? You ever notice when somebody first come here the straight way as, as much as, as we see of them externally? A lot of times when they open their mouth, they don't know. They don't realize that they're also revealing to us what's going on internally. You know, because we've been doing this for a while. But if you notice the spirit around here that we have, it's not to point fingers and when they first come. And judge them based on where they're at. You ever notice that? Am I making sense? You know, we don't tell them, don't, don't do this, don't do that. Somebody say, well, what about God? That's a different situation. It's working. It's working. Hallelujah. But when somebody come here, you know, we don't first, we don't get on them for the condition that they're in. You can't read one time when Jesus went into the synagogue. And the first thing he did was start preaching on how a woman shouldn't wear a hair weave. Now y'all come on, go with me. This may seem silly, but I'm getting, I'm being truthful here. Are y'all listening to me? Oh, how that a woman shouldn't wear makeup. Because they didn't have any unless she was a Babylonian or an Assyrian or Zidonian. You know, you had to be outside of the nation Israel to, to do that stuff. Because that just wasn't a custom of our people. If you understand what I mean. Our people were shepherds. How making sense? Um, but you can't go into the, the, the Gospels and see that 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 Christ actually went in there and just started rebuking people left and right because of the condition that they were in. Amen. Hmm? Yes, sir. Son of man said he came into the world for a particular reason. That's right. To Amen. seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. Are y'all hearing that? That means the angle that he's coming in is a total different perspective than what we are accustomed to viewing and seeing today. Amen. Yes, sir. He knew that the people were like sheep without a shepherd. Amen. Hmm? And he was a gentle shepherd. Amen. But when the wolf come around, come that gentle shepherd boy turned into a, 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 a lion. And you notice the only time he really, really got stirred up is when judgment was placed on others and the people who was doing the judgment did not judge themselves. Amen. Come on, Come on. Amen. Are y'all listening to me? Yes, sir. Are do y'all, I'm, I'm going on this based on that you are familiar with what the gospel record says. But then after they were in their condition and they had a little talk with him, he would inform them of their condition and he would always say these words, go, that means you can go on now, but let me give you something to go with. Sin no more. Isn't that something? Now, meaning you might say, what do you mean? You know, we go with the American philosophy the ideology and theology of today, we'll sit in assembly. Well, I sin, you sin, we all sin. Now, what the Messiah was telling that woman is, is don't you go and practice 
live in that sin you just got finished being forgiven of. Is that making sense? Is that all right? Is that all right? Huh? Because remember, he said clearly that when he came, he said, I came not to judge the world. Are y'all listening to me? Huh? You know how much world I see in you and I hadn't judged yet? Uh-oh. Thank y'all that passed to understand the scripture that says he came not to judge the world. Uh-oh. Why? Because his angle or order was to draw his people. And he says, by love and kindness, right, have I drawn you. Amen. Yes, sir. But see, the people could recognize love when they saw it. Amen. We are in a total different time frame today. We are in the time frame where the Bible clearly tells us that the love of many is going to do what, saints? It's going to do what, saints? That's where we at today. Am I making sense? The love of many is waxing cold. That's why you watching our society, uh, like I said last night on the radio broadcast, we're not about to create an environment. We are not about to create an environment to where our children grow up and they are confused because the world wants to be gender neutral. Am I making sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know that outside these gates right here that they have uh, two women and a child and they calling that a functional family? Do y'all know that? Do y'all realize this? Or two men and a child and they're raising a child and they call that a functional family. Because I believe what this book says right here the book teaches me that that's very dysfunctional. Is that all right? But see, there's a spirit that's working in, the, in this area, in the world that we're dealing with right now. And it's trying to teach everybody out there, you don't say nothing to nobody because there simply is no absolutes. I'm going to tell you right now, somebody is absolutely wrong. You see, when you have a condition of a people worldwide that's ripening and hastening against that day, their opinion is going to be against those who say this is right and this is wrong. The reason why I brought up Jesus then because he had a particular purpose when he physically in the flesh was walking here on this earth. Amen. Amen. Am I making sense? Yes, sir. But remember, he was the one that gave the prophets the words to speak. Are y'all listening to me? The prophets is the one that sat at his feet. Are y'all listening to me? He's the one that taught the apostles. Are y'all listening to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. And we know according to the book that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So now we live in a time where people are scared to judge. See, we want to live in Jesus' days, but we want to raise hell and be forgiven for it like in Lot days. Uh oh. Are you following me? And as Hebrews, this is not the church of Satan. Do as you want. Do as you please. Whatever the lust of your flesh says, you do it. Well, no, we have restrictions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we're all in slavery. We are a slave to the Most High Yah. 
You may not understand it, but when Jesus came, he also put down some earnest money for us. Until he wanted to redeem what he had already put a down payment on. So if you've been bought, you are a slave. I know we like dressing it up today, servant, employee, hired hand. <laughs> and I tell them the truth. I'm telling the truth. We dress it up, don't we? You know why? Because then it feels better if we dress it up. But the book, you go look behind that word servant. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and let you know what you really truly are. Hallelujah. You are a slave. Hallelujah. So I said, well, I'm not going to be no slave. Then you're going to go be a slave to sin. Because <laughs> you only have two options. Well, I'm going to do what I want. The book already called it. You're a slave to sin. It'd be, it'd be wonderful if you could do something new. But then if you do that, then that means you are the creator. Uh-oh. Are y'all listening? But we live in a world that's trying to force everybody into the acceptance of its moral decline. They don't want nobody to, to call light, light, dog, dog. It's a natural thing. It, it's just a natural thing. When you see something out of order, your face contorts. When you smell something foul, don't your nose raise up? Now the world would have never known how foul it was until the Messiah came up on the scene. When he came up on the scene, the world saw how foul it was. Because all until the Messiah came up on the scene, the world was fighting against the light. The knowledge, the truth, and the way. That's why they killed every prophet. Because they were resisting the way. And the same system that was entrenched in Christ's day that had a noose around the people's neck. We got the same system today. Pay your tithes. Give your offering and then go do as you want. You keep coming to church now though because it makes you feel better. But then after that you go do what you want. That's what the preacher say there. I'm not going to judge you. But the Bible says you judge righteous judgment. Uh-oh. Isn't that right? How would Jesus know who was a devil if he didn't judge? Are y'all hearing me? Y'all is not the author of confusion. And they're trying to confuse us today. Amen. Now, this guy on that video, y'all saw my video, handbag? Now, believe it or not, I actually made that video. Did, did, did I get on that and blast the homosexuals? No. I did. I spoke very tactfully and very respectful. I didn't even mention the name homosexual. Did y'all see handbag? Y'all don't know what y'all missing. Then all of a sudden, you know, like the proverbial saying that we often say, if you take a rock and you throw it off into a pack of dogs, the only one that's going to go, <laughs> is the one to get hit. Isn't that right? I had a guy call here to the dining hall and just give justice and sky the third degree 
over my video. Y'all hearing that? I told them y'all exercise y'all right called hang up. <laughs> People start calling, they talking all that noise, and you discern it ain't right. You all you have to, it's real easy. You just go. <laughs> if they call back, answer again. Hallelujah, straightway. <laughs> this is Sister Justice. How may I help you? You just hung up on me. Oh, is that the guy that don't know how to talk to nobody? I tell you what, as long as you are talking sensibly, we can carry on the conversation. But if you start that again, you're going to hear the same sound again. <laughs> See, we got this thing in us that we feel like that no matter how immoral, no matter how much, how much of a bad behavior somebody have, that we have to sit by and put up with it. Amen. You know, that's what Christianity taught you. Be a doormat for everybody, and then you carry the bitterness and the offense, and your body gets tore up for it. Mm hmm but he said he had been listening to me for two years. And it took me two years to make a video on a handbag. I don't understand how somebody can listen to me for two years and not know what I already preach, teach, and believe concerning what they call a handbag. Then he tried to give me a lesson on the word purse, which you should have saw my rebuttal. <laughs> I had to actually go back into the etymology of words to define. Now, in the 50s, what did the word gay mean? Look at that. Young folk. They, they're oblivious to that. Huh? See, all the older people, they happy. What does the word gay mean today? And y'all better not say that. Because you know them, 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 them people are sensitive. But what's amazing to me about that spirit is they can go around and vent out their life. They can express to the world their displeasures and what they don't like but then when you start telling them what you don't like all of a sudden it's a problem what a hypocrite what a hypocrite but Luke 17 verse 26 listen to what Yahshua Hamashiach has to say the king of glory. Listen to what he had to say. Read, Brother Shane. I think I'm on point because I ain't even turned it. I ain't got no notes up here, brother. Read on. And as it was in the days of Noah. Now, wait a minute. As it was in the days of Noah. That means the world was in a certain condition. Now, we already know the history of Noah, right? Noah was a preacher of righteousness. We live in a world that they don't want to call nothing right and nothing wrong. Y'all see the reason why they didn't pay attention to Noah? Yeah. Do y'all see the reason why they did not pay attention to Noah? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Because we are now in the same condition as it was in the days of Noah. What did he say, Brother Shane? So shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. Now notice he said in the days, plural. He's talking about from the time he's there up until it's coming. Days, plural. Because we know what the day with the Most High Yah is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day, and we know that Yahweh has a seven thousand year calendar. Isn't that right? No, as he said that, read on, watch this. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark. You mean what happened then? What do you mean they did all that until? No, did they just stop then? No, I mean, up, that means all the way up until that point. They did all that until the first raindrop fell out of the sky. Uh-oh. Read. And the flood came, 
and destroyed them all. It destroyed some of them. All. Do you think that the Messiah love us enough to give us warning? He's telling, I want you to pay attention to the conditions. You remember, there's nothing new under the sun. As it was before, so shall it be again. And if you ignore these signs, then you're going to be like the foolish virgins. And you're going to miss your day of visitation. Because you know why? You're going to be in sin. And that sin is going to be your ruin. See, these people for 120 years heard Noah run his mouth. But their condition was so bad that they made a mockery of Noah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They, you know, the Bible said fools make a mock at sin. And since we're above the ground right now, nobody believes that hell is real. Y'all understand that, right? But oh, if somebody could come back and preach us a sermon about hell. Do you think that will convince us? Well, Jesus already answered that. He said, though it won't come back from the dead, they still won't believe. He said, they got Moses and the prophets. They got all these preachers up, all these righteous men. You let them people hear them. And the man said, they ain't going to hear him. He said, well, don't worry about it. They're going to join you. Uh oh. Now, what this generation want to do is they want to ignore that. But you do it to your own apparel. Because the Bible commands for us not only to be holy, but it commands for us to be perfect. How many times we've adopted this? Ain't nobody perfect. Well, he is. And he's somebody, ain't he? Oh, okay. So much for that statement. What they're saying is you ain't perfect. And the reason why they say that, because it continues to give them a license to stay in their condition and feel comfortable. That's why you get so many wicked people fighting against the righteous. That's why whenever you're reproved of your condition and your condition is falling short of the glory of Yah, the first thing you do is get mad at the one bringing the message. Because the heart is hardened. We don't like that because we live in a society that is quickly almost got it almost got it done. The condition of men's mind where everything is neutral. We go all the way to the book of the revelations. It said, what does it say? He said, I would whether that you were hot or cold, but because you are what? Neutral. I am going to, what is this action going to be? Spew you out of my mouth. Do y'all see what's going on? Am I painting the picture pretty good up here? Am I still in the book? Is this what the book says, saints? And you see what this society is doing right now, right? It wants to make everybody neutral in judgment. The very people who preach Toleration are very intolerant of you. Hypocrites. When I raised my two children, I wanted them to know that there's a difference between a boy and a girl. They want no spirit of confusion upon them. Around you come here the straight way, you're going to see a difference. There will be no question who's a boy and who's a girl. Who's a man and who's a woman? Amen. Amen. Is that all right? Yeah. Why do you think that women want to look like men today and men want to look like women? Because we live in, in a gender neutral time. Amen. Amen. Y'all hearing this? Yes, sir. So we see that the Messiah says it was in the day of Noah, and they were doing something, but then he goes on to say this. Read, Brother Shane. Likewise. Likewise. Also. Read. As it was in the days of Lot. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Now Noah had a day. Now Lot has a day. Yes, sir. All right. Read on. 
They did eat. Mm -hmm. They drank. Yep. They bought. Yep. They sold. And they planted. Uh huh. They built it. And but the same day uh -huh. that Lot went out of Sodom. Now what we got to do is we got to ask ourselves a question. Come on. We know that them people were immoral. Yes. Come on. Yes, sir. And you know if Jesus is going to tell the story, he's going to tell it. Yes, we got to ask ourselves, why come that part is left out? Come on. Yeah. Come on. You know, because we, we have to accept what the translators put in. Yes, but when we go back to the story of Lot, we got the reasons right here that Sodom was destroyed, but we missing out on one main reason. This is called self-autonomy. This is called having the ability to be able to think of what you call they read between the lines. Because this sin was so vile that it even caused the Most High himself to come down. All the reports were going up to him. And he said, I got to see this for myself. I've got to see this for myself. Unbelievable. Y'all do know what that sin is, right? Yes. I'm going to tell you what my friend would, would be offended at. He would call this sin men wearing handbags. Because he got stirred up on that one, brother. But this sin was because creation was doing something that it wasn't supposed to do. It wasn't created for that. So the Most High had to come down and check it out for himself. Read, Brother Shane. It rained fire and brimstone from heaven. He did what? It rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. See, the homosexuals could read this and say, I'm clear. That's the reason why the Christianity want you to avoid reading the Old Covenant. Come on. Come on. Because the Old Covenant brings judgment. Yeah. See, we know what happened in Sodom. Yeah. But if you're a brand new sissy coming in, Come on. you don't know what happened in Sodom. You're going to say, I don't read the Old Testament. Right. Amen. I didn't read that. We in a new time. <laughs> and believe it or not, I don't hate the homosexuals. I love them more than actually they hate themselves. I love them enough to tell them the truth. At least I will give you warning. Not for what I'm going to do. I can't do nothing. I'm going to give you a warning of what he is going to do. And we're so arrogant and prideful today that guess what? I don't care what you say. Hey, they didn't care what Jeremiah said. They didn't care what Ezekiel said. They didn't care what Moshe said. Are y'all listening to me? And because they didn't care, they got their judgment. So somebody was right and somebody was wrong. Y'all hearing that? And you go to these Christian churches out there, the Christian church and the Catholic church all got something in common. They all have booty call. Amen. And that's the reason why I tell you people to come out of that mess. Amen. Because, see, you've gotten to the point now that you can't, well, I tell you the message was going to be on today. You can't even discern. Because everything is neutral. And if you can't discern, that means you don't know right from wrong. Amen. And you have learned how to define truth and lies on your own terms. Amen. And now you are playing the most high. Amen. We need to hear this, Israel. We need to hear this. Because... The order for Isaiah, he said, you cry aloud. Yes, sir. And you spare what? Not. Not. And when you cry aloud, I want you to lift your voice up so loud right. Amen. that it's like a trumpet. Amen. Well, why are you doing it, Isaiah? Because I want you to show Israel, my people, their sins. Yeah. Amen. Why you want me to do that? Father, because I love them. 
Is that the only reason why that you will give warning? Yeah. It's because you don't want to see nobody destroyed. Right. Amen. Now, we're not going to change the way that this world is going. Because the book already told us the way it's going to be. Amen. Are you following me? Yes, you didn't know one day. Hey, you was too busy doing your little thing. You didn't know you was an Israelite. And some of you in here are not going to make it to the kingdom. You need to know that. Amen. I know. And some, and some of you out there, you ain't going to make it to the kingdom. You know why? Because your heart is not right. Amen. You don't believe me? Do I always say be a student of the history? Yeah. And we talking about some bad numbers in history. Bad numbers. Did not Israel receive salvation out of Mizraim? How many entered into heaven called the promised land? We better get this thing. After being surrounded by so many great clouds of witness, I see. I understand. I only got one soul, and I hated myself when I wasn't informed to His ways. But I believe it or not, I actually love myself because I can't love you until I learn how to love myself. Did y'all hear me? On these two commandments, ain't the whole law: love Yahweh thy Elohim and love thy neighbor how and the reason why you have a problem loving your neighbor because you don't love yourself you want to blame everything on your neighbor but you are the problem look in the mirror you don't like them because you don't like you you don't love them because you don't love you you got a problem with them because you got a problem with you We love his blame shifting, don't it? Amen. Makes us feel better. Uh oh. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Well, I don't love them. I know why. Self hatred is working in the house. See, Israel, there's no option for us. The Bible teaches us we're supposed to have fervent charity. Did y'all hear what I said? That means it is hot. Fervent love towards each other. That's what the book teaches. Am I a straight way? Am I in a Christian church or something? something did I say something wrong? Did I say something wrong? I want to make sure now. Man, I had a spirit up here trying to get me to doubt what I was at. Whoa, wait a minute now. What was that? Come on. Gotta get some witnesses in here on this one. Tell the truth, the reason why we don't put ourselves out there to love nobody is because we've been hurt so much ourselves. And I ain't about to allow myself to get hurt. You already hurt. Let me go on before I start talking about that, though, okay? Preaching is not, I'm telling you, preaching is not going to a concert. And neither is it going to a movie. Preaching is not, it is not to make you feel better. Preaching is there to give you clear cut direction. Of what's right, what's wrong, what Yahweh expects, and what you better do. It's not open for discussion. Well, you might say, I don't like that. Then you have your right to exercise self will. But know this there's a payment for self will. I don't think that's irrational, do you? He says, You do this, this will happen. You do this, this will happen. You can't get no more clear, more fair than that. The definition of preaching is preach the word. Amen. Preach what? Preach my opinion? No. Preach what you like. No. Preach what you want to hear. No, sir. 
preach your perspective, no. your opinion, no. your ideology, no. your theology, no. your church background, no. what your family believes. No. Oh, because none has the word, is it? No. He said, preach the word. word. And then it says, be instant, in season and out of season. That's like in here, it's been hot and it's been cold, and we've only been at this 30 minutes. We done had two extreme seasons since being in here. Huh? In season now, see. And look what it says. First thing, first thing. Reprove. Do y'all think we like that? And then it says, rebuke. Now wait a minute. You know, in Christianity, we didn't come to church to get reproved and rebuked. How many, how many people come to church for the sole purpose to get reproved and rebuked? See, ain't nobody. Look, then you didn't come to hear the word. Am I in the book, saints? Am I in the book? Is that what the book says? And then it goes on and it says something like this. And exhort. He said because, look at this. The time will come. Are y'all listening to me? The time will come. Watch this. That men, is it, let's see if it's us, will not endure that means put up with huh look at this sound doctrine but what they do want is they want teachers that it's their ears that tell them what they want to hear why because of their own lust it gives them a license. Right. Amen. Amen. So I said, Pastor, that ain't what the word said. Yes, it does too. Yeah. Amen. All I did was help fill in the modern day gaps. Yeah. Amen. 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 Uh oh. Amen. You are here by divine, the divine sovereign will of the Most High. Amen. Most of you think you sit now on your own mission. But when I go back and read that book, he clearly says, you have not chosen me. But I have chosen you. See, so don't think you sitting up there because you want to be there. Some of you are sitting there for eternal life and some of you are sitting there to get filled up so you can go to hell. Y'all need to know that. Remember I said a few broadcasts ago, you know, I say partic- I, I say it all the time. Check me out, right? Yeah. I say, check out what I believe. Check out how I live. Check out everything that's going on. Yeah. All right, follow me? Yeah. You know the reason why I say it, right? Come because, on. see, when you get finished, first of all, the truth is, you're not even in a position to check me out. Come on. Uh-oh. Come on. You know why? Because they that preach the gospel must also live of a gospel. Yes. Amen. Uh-oh. The truth is, I need to be checking you out. Where you been for the last 20 years? Straightway, we were fasting and praying. But you were feasting and playing. Uh Uh-oh. You can see what we've been doing. What you've been doing. Do y'all hear me? I say that because I want them to check me out. Because you know why? Because the end result is... You're going to be checked out. Because you come here, all your excuses for not serving y'all is removed. Every one of them. And you go back from this point that is on your own admission. Because you ain't going to leave here moaning and complaining because we don't do this and we don't do that and we don't do this and we don't do that. I told you. The reason why most of you ain't never assembled to go to church 
because you, your excuse was is because it's full of hypocrites. Amen. And I said it once, I said it a thousand times. Let's tell the real truth. The reason why you don't go to church is because if you were to win, there would have been one more damn hypocrite sitting in the church. Amen. At least they are there. It's all about perspective, isn't it? Now you see the reason why Jesus said you will be hated of all men for my name's sake. In other words, if you're going to be hated, you got to say something that men are going to hate you for. And people don't hate me because I do them wrong. People do not hate me because I do them wrong. They hate what I have to say. Uh oh. Ain't y'all good? Ain't y'all good? We're developing this thing here, and we all, I'm serious. We're going to get on with discernment, but we're developing this thing right here. Because we live in a world that's in a state of confusion. Just a total state of confusion. Are you following me? If the Messiah don't hurry up and make some moves, yes, the book goes on to say we all would have been like Amen. Sodom. Right. And he even prefaced that statement by saying when he comes, Come will he find faith? Not mental assent. No. People who actually living and doing this yeah. on this earth. Amen. And earth is not looking too good right now. No. No. It's not looking too good right now. The devil lies are being exposed for who he really is. Amen. You're able to sit and listen because the Most High has let you know that you are Israel. Amen. You are the real true Israel. Amen. You're the ones that fit the book. You're the one that's scattered abroad. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, you called yourself by all these names that our people never even knew. Now you know who you are. So yes, there's a standard. We have to make a stand for something that's right and wrong. I, can't, I don't care that the, the man gets upset if he is a man. Because I don't believe that women should carry purses. Y'all hearing that, right? I said I don't believe that women should carry purses. Y'all thought, thought I misspoke. No, I didn't either. Y'all hearing that? Y'all hear me? Purses, according to the book, is someone who carries a money bag. See, I'm in a proper order and perspective, not coming from today's understanding. And the money bag that Jesus was talking about then was a money bag that the disciples carried. I mean, he did take me straight to where I quoted from. Now, I do believe that women only should carry Purses, modern day. Uh oh, are y'all? I gave both perspectives. But for a man to carry, I mean, if it's already forbidden for a man to wear that which pertaineth to a woman, and a woman that wear that which pertaineth to a man, I, I think that purses would also fit the bill too. So to have them. Past doll is not going to carry your purse. <laughs> Y'all could understand if Sister Carol and I were getting out of the car and she said, she got her hands full and said, Can you grab this bag? She don't ever say, Grab my purse. She said, Can you grab this bag? And I'll grab the bag. She makes it, if she say purse, purse, I didn't grab it. But don't think because I'm running from the car to the house. That I done adopted a new philosophy. <laughs> Y'all listen to me, Israel? Yes, sir. Ethnology of words, okay? Amen. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, don't you get confused. You're a boy, you're a boy, you're a boy, and y'all made you that way. You're a, you're a girl, you're a girl, you're a girl, and y'all made you that way. Do not enter into this age of confusion. Amen. Finish reading that, Brother Shane. Even thus, 
shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed? Y'all hearing it? That means these conditions, just like it was in Noah's day, just like it was in Lot's day, it, these conditions are going to be with us all the way up until the Son of Man comes again. So we're not going to stop this thing. It's just going to get worse. And you better hope you bring your children up the right way, because if not, they're going to end up gender neutral. In a state of confusion. First, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse, um, start at verse 3. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? Y'all get that, right? Y'all hear that, right? Now go down to verse 9. Know ye not. I want you to know. That don't mean don't know. That don't mean don't walk around. That's just the way they speak, okay? All right? Know ye not means you need to know. Okay? I better, if I don't get it out there, they're going to quote me. Take it all out of context. Read. That the unrighteous. Oh, 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 wait a minute. That the, uh, so if there are some unrighteous, then there has to be some what? Righteous. righteous. Isn't that right? Now, he says, I want you to know that the unrighteous is not going to do what, Brother Shane? Shall not inherit the kingdom of Yah. Be not deceived. The unrighteous is not going to inherit the kingdom of Yah. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? Do we need anybody to explain? Do, do y'all need a, a breakdown of that? So he's talking about there are some people, a certain group, that ain't going to inherit the kingdom. They ain't going in. Read. Be not deceived. Not only that, but don't even be deceived. Read on. Neither fornicators. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. But fornication feel good. But he says fornicators are not going to do what? Inherit the kingdom of Yah. So don't be deceived. I don't care how good it feel. You ain't going in. Read on. Nor idolaters. Hey, man, I like worshiping idols, man. What's wrong with that? My personal opinion. But guess what? Idolaters are not going into the kingdom of, and don't be deceived. Amen. See, the problem is they hate for you to tell them what's wrong. Amen. Read on. Nor adulterers. Uh, uh, man, adultery, don't it feel good? Spiritual adultery, natural adultery. But guess what? You ain't going to inherit the kingdom of Yah. Uh oh. That means already we got three categories of people in trouble. You see the reason why that the world don't want no absolutes. They want everybody to do what's right for you. That's what the book of Satan says. Do what feel good to you. Huh? You need to know. And all of you out there. That's listening. You partake in living these sins. You know already aforetime time. You ain't going to inherit the kingdom of Yah. Read on. Nor effeminate. Oh, oh, oh. Time out. Time out. In feminine. Now that's a word we got to break down. Because we live in a gender neutral society that cannot discern what that word means but the bible says that type of person is not going in do y'all know here in america that they have a viable organization called nimbla anybody know what that means a few people huh i'm gonna go ahead and break it down for you it's an organization that thrives NIMBLA is called North American Man Boy Love Association. Now we ain't got to go in great detail on that, do we? <laughs> Not only does an effeminate person have a certain character and nature about themselves, because it comes with that spirit. Yes, but not only that, but look at this. It's someone 
that actually uses their body for what is not created for. I'm going to keep it clean, all right? And feminine are not going in. I venture to say almost 80% of us are already guilty of just the first four in our past. But we're not guilty no more. Look at them looking at me. Don't think I'm just getting on the sissies. I'm getting on everybody. You can categorize yourself and sit up in your self-righteous fornicating life all you want, but you're going to go to the same hell. Then he say, I, don't want you, I want you to know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of what? Yeah. Read on. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. What? That's breaking it down, isn't it? Do y'all seeing y'all seeing what's not going in right now, right? Read on. Nor thieves. Nor who? Nor thieves. You people that still, you are not going into the kingdom. Read on. Nor covetous. What? Nor covetous. What? You gotta be kidding me. That's a spirit that's running all over America. As a matter of fact, you hardly ever hear sermons preached on covetousness. And the Bible says that that spirit is idolatry. Read on. Watch this. Nor drunkards. What? Nor drunkards. Man, that's the favorite pastime in America. Read on. Nor revilers. Bunch of angry folk, huh? Always running around raising hell. Read on. Nor extortioners. Boy, that's the government finished then, isn't it? Everybody in it. They all done. They're finished. All Congress on a one-way ticket to hell. That's just the truth. Read on. Shall inherit the kingdom of Yah. There ain't no need in discernment. We ain't got to figure out what that means and stuff. If you partake, you live in that lifestyle, you continue to do this, heaven will not be your home. Amen. Don't be deceived. That's pretty simple, isn't it? But we live in a society that wants nobody to judge nothing. Now, they're making inroads into the churches in the pulpits. Y'all hearing me, saints? Am I preaching the book? So don't y'all ever be deceived. Regardless of what people's personal opinion is, these people ain't never going in. And he's telling us that to make sure that we know the warning. One and always come before destruction. You know we have a shortage of today though? Those who have enough man in them to stand up and warn. You know, we don't like hurting people's feelings. In other words, let's tell the truth, we don't like telling people what Yah expects and says. And the reason why we don't like doing it because we ain't obeying it myself. I'm in the house, ain't I? Now, after listening to me thus far this morning, who am I for? That's not hard, isn't it? Now, I ask you the same question. Who are you for? Did I just make up my own philosophy? My own perspective? My own theology? Or am I in agreement with what has already been established of all time? Okay, same with you. All right, so sissy, get mad all you want in my handbag video. It's still my opinion, and it's my belief and lifestyle. Amen. Can you imagine somebody get all disturbed over that? It must have took him eighteen hours to put that video together. He got me with a video. Look at me. <laughs> he probably gonna sound like that too. <laughs> Glory to the king. 
All right, now we got all that out of the way. It took about 45 minutes, but we got it out of the way. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to move on. We're going to talk about discernment here, Israel, this morning, okay? You need to understand, you need to understand that in order for you to be effective in the deliverance ministry, in healing, in salvation, or even just even function in his life, you must exercise the art of discernment. Don't think that you automatically have discernment. You have discernment to a certain level, but you need to increase. You don't have discernment for everything. Because discernment is strictly the ability to be able to discern what's right and what's wrong. And growing up in, in this land that is not our nativity and stuff, we found it very difficult to discern what's right and wrong because we become like the natives. And as Israelites, that means we have to unlearn everything we have ever learned so that we can learn the Messiah who has saved us and redeemed us. Is that all right? Hallelujah. So some of us are fully aware of the spiritual warfare that is going on right now. And some of us are totally blind to it. And believe it or not, some people are totally blind to it on purpose. You know this, brothers and sisters. Anytime somebody refuses to talk about something, it's because they are guilty of the thing that they refuse to talk about. I mean, come on. If a preacher's going to get up and say, you got devils, you got demons, and they need to be cast out, then that means the, de the preacher's not exempt. Hallelujah. But if you're up here saving face and you're trying to uh, keep your ego intact and stuff, the people are going to ultimately suffer. Because the word, when it's really truly preached, is supposed to bring about a change in life. It's supposed to bring about a real true deliverance. Hallelujah. The Bible says that it was going to be this way. So, growing is all about an attitude. It's how you view and look at it. That's what it's about. It's about an attitude. The ones who grow in Christ are the ones who really truly love him and I want you to really listen to me today Israel I really truly do because today's message is going to be about discernment maturity Psalms 139 verse 23 listen to how David talk oh y'all listen to me saints alright listen how he talk he said search me oh y'all can I ask y'all a question? How many of us actually ask him that? Huh? Y'all hearing that? Now notice, everybody don't raise their hand. Oh, it's just the truth. Yeah. Listen to how he, listen to how he, well, listen to what he went on to say. And know my heart. In other words, David didn't want nothing to be hid from him. Amen. Not only that, look what he says. Try me. And know my thoughts. Y'all hear that? Yeah. You talking about a deep inward searching. Turn on the light, Father. That's what basically Dawid is asking. Look what he says. And see. In other words, Father, I want you to look at me. I want you to pay attention to me. I want you to look inside of me. Look what he says now. And see if there be any wicked way in me. Now I'm telling you, the only people who talk like that is somebody whose heart is right. Because you got something to hide, you don't talk like that. And you definitely don't live like it. Amen. That's a different kind of heart. Yes, Amen. And then he says, when you get finished, when you get finished doing all this examination, you're looking at all this because you know when you, if I'm asking you to do this, surely I'm going to be showed myself. Yeah. Look at this. Then he says, and lead me in the way everlasting. Dawi is passionate, passionately asking y'all. Many, many times, I want you to examine me. Yah, I want you to know my heart. Not only that, y'all, I want you to test me to see if I fit the bill. I want you to examine my thoughts. I want all wicked ways rooted out of me. 
so I can walk perfectly before you in your way. Is that what David is saying? I ask you again, how many ask for that kind of deep cleansing? Ain't too many. Not many. Not many. That's integrity of heart. That's integrity of heart. Y'all see the reason why I say ain't many people going to make it. Because most people don't want y'all to look at them that deeply. Uh Uh-oh. Have we forgotten what kind of man that we was, though? Everybody always, they remember David as king, but they always remember his sin, but they never remember how his heart was toward Yah. Hmm? When we talk about Solomon, they remember Solomon and all of his wives, but they never remember Solomon's sin. We are in a bad condition. Because one was a man created after Yah's own heart. And the other despised him. Y'all see the reason why we need to ask for a deep cleansing? We need our mind purified. Yo, yeah, we do. Because we don't know how to think. I know we don't. Hallelujah. I'm wondering if we're willing to make the same request. That's what I'm wondering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've always said you can tell who's growing and who's not. All you got to do is simply watch. Watch what they say. Watch what they do. Watch what they don't say. Watch what they don't do. Action, as the old proverbial saying, speak loud in words. Listen to the book over in 1 Kings, the 11th chapter. We'll start at verse 1. Who was David according to y'all? Listen to this. But King Solomon loved many strange women. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, the women of the Moabites, the Amorites, the Edomites, the Zidonians, and the Hittites. Of the nations concerning which Yahweh said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go into there. Do you understand that Israel was the only nation on the face of planet earth that had righteous laws, statutes, and commandments? Do you understand that? Do y'all understand that Israel was the only nation on earth, the only family on earth that had the creator of the universe as their father? There wasn't nothing wrong with these nations going around mixing with each other. That was, that was nothing at all. You see what's done happening with our condition now? Look at us now. Huh? We're in another land, another nation. And we don't see nothing wrong with intermingling with the natives of this, this nation and land. See the reason why we see see the reason why inheritance has been robbed from us, taken from us. Uh, we've given it up because of our own iniquity, our own sin. As soon as you marry a heathen, your fear of Yah is going to diminish. A house divided cannot stand. Hmm? You are jeopardizing not only you but the seed that's coming after you. Uh oh. Y'all see what's going on in Israel? That's why there's no way that you, as somebody who profoundly believes, can ever have an association with an unbeliever. Can't be. Can't be. But know this. Know this. You will lose every time. That's the reason why the warnings are given to us. Are you following me? Listen to what he says. Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will, look at this, turn away your heart after their gods. Right. Now mind you, I'm not no Solomon. And I definitely can tell you ain't. Well, why you had to put it like that, Pastor? That would make me no difference how you put it. Put me on the other end. I know I'm not no Solomon. How is it that this man could be so wise and you have the most high appear to him twice and yet so wise but disobeys? Does, I mean, was he corrupted by wisdom? I mean, that's how the devil was. I mean, was he was so wise that he thought that he was exempt from God? Uh-oh. I mean, when you become wise, I mean, you're supposed to be, hey, it's supposed to make you wiser, not more for food. But he had got so wise that he didn't think that this law 
applied to him. Oh, it applied to everybody else, but not to me. See, the problem we learned in Israel, when you see the priest doing something, inevitably the people are going to be justified in their sin to do the same thing. Because the preachers are supposed to be the pillar of a community. Are y'all listening to me? Let me read on here. Look what he said. Look. He said, the most I said, for surely they will turn away your heart after their God. Solomon cleaved unto these in what? Who are you supposed to love? Thank you very much. Now you can love people as they are in love with him. Is that proper order and perspective? But nobody comes before him. Nobody! Nobody! He said, I'm a jealous y'all. Are y'all getting this? Let's read on. And he had 700 wives, princes, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with Yahweh, his Elohim, as was his father. Who was his father? David. David. The most I said that David's heart was perfect towards him. Yeah. Upright. I mean, surely Solomon should have been able to follow in David's footsteps with no problem. Yeah, we got David seen on display, but I hear the testimony of Yah. Oh, I hear the testimony of y'all. Yes, I do too. Wow. Said that his heart was not perfect towards Yahweh's Elohim, as was the heart of David. You mean David's heart was perfect towards the Father? Oh, boy. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth. Now, I know a lot of Americans don't understand that kind of language. But I'm going to show you how that this has even affected us. See, Astro was the goddess of the Zidonians. And you know how I know that the apple don't fall far from the tree? How many people in here has ever celebrated Easter? How many of you people out there ever celebrated Easter? Your heart is not perfect towards Yah. Because you think you just chasing around an unclean rabbit that lays eggs and is all totally innocent. But in truth, in worship, you are worshiping Astro. See why Christianity is so perverted today? You know why? Because look, we have been married and intermarried with all these people who y'all told us to not do. And let me ask you a question. Have we learned their ways or have they learned our ways? And what did your fathers teach you? There you go. And so therefore the curses are perpetuated. Unless the most high Yah himself come down and set his love upon somebody and say I picked you, I called you, and I chosen you to be my seed. We'd all been just like Sodom and Gomorrah. It's nothing but the goodness of Yah. Nothing but. Because we were entrenched in idolatry. Couldn't even think another way. We even justified and thought it was right. Thought we was worshiping him. But in vain. We were worshiping him. Yes, we were. Yes, we were. And it was his goodness that led us to repent. It's just the truth. And after Malcolm, the abomination of the Amorites, and Solomon did evil. Solomon did what? Evil. Solomon did evil in the sight of Yahweh and went not fully. Oh, ho, ho. Time in, time out again. 
You see what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Let me ask us all a question. How many of us today are fully going after y'all? Come on. Come on, I see y'all out there. I see ya. I keep trying to tell us over and over again, Israel, it's all of him plus nothing. There's no life without him. I want y'all to listen to this. Listen to what he said. And Solomon did evil on the side of Yahweh and went not fully after Yahweh as did Dawid his father. I got a question. I want to ask all you people out there, which one of you can accuse Pastor Dow of not fully being for Yah? Living after Yah? Type it in. I want to hear. Because believe it or not, whether you like it or not, whether it be positive or negative, all judgment come from y'all. Every bit of it. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Do y'all know that, that, that we all can be blinded to ourselves? Yes, I'm putting myself out on chopping block. I want to know why I'm falling short. Because yes, you're going to see me do something different than your attitude and your behavior. I'm not going to sit and argue and fuss and fight with you. Sure. I'm going to do a good, sincere evaluation and see if it applies. If it does, I'm going to take what's right and I'm going to grow thereby. Is that not a right heart? That's the way you should be, Israel. I'm that way because he's that way. But I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm that way because I love him. More than just words dripping off my lips like honey. Love not in word only, but in what? Deed. That's all he wants of us, brothers and sisters, to love him as much as he loves us. That's not asking too much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the ability to see clearly and to distinguish or to recognize, to perceive, to see clearly, to separate good from evil is what discernment is all about. It's the ability to discern truth from lies. You know, growth in the Messiah. Many of us have been Israelites for a long time and we should have been teaching others by now. Did I say something wrong? No, it got kind of quiet there for a minute. A pin almost dropped. And you can almost hear a pin drop. But the truth is, many of us have been Israelites for a long time. And we, by, by that time, just by the statue of nature, we should already have positioned ourselves to be able to instruct and teach others. Uh-oh. But because we have not, I'm going to use a word here, okay? I'm going to use a word. You got me, Brother Doug Bell? I'm going to use a word, brother. Because we have not, watch this, aggressively pursued the kingdom. Because we have not progressively pursued the truth. We have become insensitive to it. I'm going to use the Bible word. Is that all right, Israel? The Bible word is dulled. Dulled. Growth. I'm going to show you how that we are blanketed today by a bunch of immature adolescent arguments. Just to keep us all in preschool. Are y'all listening, Israel? Are y'all listening, Israel? Hmm? Because growth is stifled by arguments. That's the spiritual condition. I'll show you some of the arguments that we get. Is repentance necessary for salvation? Then you got one denomination that argues with another. Oh, you got one brother arguing with another brother. What is his name? Then you got all these people arguing with each other left and right. What do you say his name is? And it starts all this controversy. Hmm? How did you get baptized? 
What did they say when you got baptized? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Do you have the Holy Spirit? How do you know you got the Holy Spirit? And it starts all these arguments. Do you believe that healing is for today? We don't believe that healing is for today. We believe it stopped with the apostles. Does y'all still perform miracles today? And we fuss and we fight and we argue over principles of doctrine that we should have learned when we were babies. But if you notice the thrust of a lot of ministries is nothing but argument. Nothing but contention. The whole ministry is though. I'm going to prove to you that ever since I've been two months old, I've been right. And I'm still preaching and teaching the same thing I learned when I was two months old. We're going to see this in the book though. Huh? What happens when you die? Do you go to heaven or hell? Do you soul sleep? Do you do this? Do you do None of this, none of this would bring you to perfection. Every single one of these arguments are arguments from showing you the people who have not been weaned from the milk. Are y'all listening to me? I mean, it's trivial. It really truly is. I mean, we could understand when we first came in, right? But man, I mean, come on, 10, 15, 20 years from now, come on, you should be well down the road. Let's talk about sanctification. Now let's argue over that. You don't see people arguing over that one. You don't see people arguing over sanctification. Because a baby can't argue over sanctification. <laughs> I'm telling you, you pay attention to people's perspectives, where they're coming from. And it's going to tell you where they're at in growth. Now y'all listen to me. Today we call preaching, standing on the street corner, calling people Edomites. That's the gospel in a nutshell. You didn't know that? In America, we don't have a shortage of prophets. New York is inundated with them. They got them all over the place. Are y'all seeing this? Oh, well, we're going to see about the book, though, okay? Too many people are unwilling to, re to remove themselves from the basic principles of Scripture. That don't mean that they're taken away from it. That means that you've done past all that and you're way on down the road now. You ever notice when people come around here, we never give them the third degree? How was you saved? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? How was you baptized? You know what we usually do? Let the preaching take care of it. We never give nobody a checklist to see if you can fit our bill. Usually, just the preaching in itself takes care of everything. And in time, if they didn't know it, did they hear the preaching, the Holy Spirit, allow the Holy Spirit to work. But we're not going to hold a gun to your head, Brother Alex, and say, Brother, we don't know if we're going to accept you with us because you don't believe like we do. I mean, after all, we've been baptizing in Jesus' name for 30 years now, and that's the only thing we know how to preach. The problem is, that the real issues of unity for us in Christ, it ain't going to never be attained as long as we keep this type of condition. You know, Paul implores us continually again and again and again to go from childhood to adulthood. To leave being a babe to go to perfection. If it was not possible for us to be perfect, the most High would have never written it. Amen. Hebrews, the sixth chapter, starting in verse one. I said all that just to get to this part right here. Therefore, listen what it says. Leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Let us do what? Go on to perfection. Y'all hearing that? 
Y'all hear that? Is this not beautiful? Yes. Let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. Usually the people who come to us are people who've already repented of their sins. They're just tired of being babes. Hallelujah. Listen to what it says. And faith towards y'all of the doctrines of what? Baptisms. People do argue over that, don't they? Laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. Are they not some pivotal points in religion today? People will argue those things. But the Bible says, you know, man, them are things, principles. That means the beginning of things. You should have been well on by now. Watch this now. Look at this. This, and this we will do if Yah permits. For it is impossible, key, for those who are once enlightened have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit. Look, and have tasted of the good word of Yah and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away. So much for one saved, always saved. Hmm? To renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of Yah afresh and put him to an open shame. You know, you come this way, you do all the first works and the principles of Yah, you get cleaned up, do everything in the most high exception stuff, then you turn around and go back. You know what you just did? You just said, Jesus, your crucifixion is in vain. Your impalement on the tree was not powerful enough to save me. You are a liar. See, people don't understand that that's what you are communicating to the Father when you repent. And you turn from the wicked way and then you go back into that wicked way again. You might as well have been the one impelling him again. There's a whole lot more than what meets the eye. That's why we need understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we're not receiving deliverance and healing in our lives, it's because we're blinded to ourselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, many times we may have went through the motions, but yet y'all knows our heart. That's why I read earlier that we have to be like David. Go back and read it again. You need to start asking him to look at your heart in that kind of measure. So that you don't be deceived. We must meet his conditions. Hebrews, the fifth chapter, verse four. Look what it says. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that was called of Yah, as was Aaron. That was one of the first plaques that I had put up here on the church. You sit right there in this assembly, in this building right here. Now, the understanding of that is, is that there is no man that's going to call himself to the ministry of Yah. Oh, there's people that's going to make themselves ministers of Yah. And you people won't know because you're so used to being churched. I'll repeat it again. And no man take of this honor unto himself. You hear that? Yeah. This is an honorable place that only Yah himself is going to do the picking and choosing. Amen. Not mama called daddy sin or you had a vision or dream and you thought you were one day. And you're going to be able to tell because you're going to be able to watch them how they preach it and how they teach it in their life. You're going to know them by their fruit. Oh yes you are too. But to know them by their fruit you got to know this word. This is an honor that the most high calls himself. And look what he says. But he that is called of Yah as was what? Aaron. Haran was the high priest. Haran didn't call himself. It was the most high that called him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The call of Yah is not where you get a personal revelation thinking that you should be a preacher, or apostle, or prophet, or a teacher. Because you look at somebody else and you compare yourself with him and think that I can do that too. You the one that definitely ain't never been called. Never. I don't know anybody. Because now we're getting so smart. We hear me make these statements. I don't know anybody in their right mind that ever want to do something like this. And now they'll say, you know, I ain't never wanted to do this. Because they know the first one ain't working no more. So they have to hear somebody like me and say, you know, I ain't, I ain't never really wanted to do this. Just watch them, though. 
You just watch. I'm telling you right now, if a man of Yah does not have the power of Yah and the Holy Spirit working in his life and the lifestyle to back it up, you better take you and your family right. and you better run as fast as you can and as far as you can away from them. Amen. That's what you better do. You better save yourselves. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. Nothing but the truth. But this honor is only an honor that Yahweh can call. Verse 5. So as Christ glorified not himself to be made in high priest, but he said unto him, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. As he said also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong cries and tears unto him that was able to save him from death when he heard in the end that he feared. Though he were a son. Now notice I stopped there. Because don't we claim to be his sons? Well let's see what it says. Yet he learned obedience by the things that he what? You ever notice disobedience never caused suffering until after the fact? But being obedient is always called suffering because it's, a, hey, I will, don't want to change. And if you're a son, you're going to learn obedience because you're going to suffer. And you believe me, you come to straight way, there's no shortage of suffering. This word will keep you jacked up. On purpose. Glory to the king. And you get to sit there to discern if it's right or wrong. Isn't that beautiful? Because you don't want to be lied to, neither do I. Listen to this, listen to this. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that, what's that word? Obey. What's that word? Obey. One more time. Obey. You know, that's a word we don't like. But he's only the author of eternal salvation to them that you know, later on in that same book, it says, obey them to have a rule over you. Same word. I ain't letting no man tell me nothing. Don't worry about it. You won't obey nothing. I know. I know why. People who have a rule don't want to rule you. Why would somebody want to rule somebody that can't rule themselves? The Bible said there's a time when another man will rule over another man and do it. To his own heart. See, if you don't know the book, you think that only you getting injured. What about the one that has a rule over you? Who's watching your re resistant condition? Watching you sitting there destroying yourself. That hurts. When we're trying to save you from yourself. So you thought it was all about you. Uh oh. Called of Yah and high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have, look at this, look at this, look at many things to say. Watch this though. Hard to be uttered. Seeing ye are dull of hearing. Y'all hear this? Yes, sir. Yep. The order of understanding here, Israel, is that I have a very serious desire to teach you Messiah. The depths of Messiah. Hallelujah. But if you are unable to hear his teachings, what he's telling us is, is that our ability is not impaired from hearing sounds or knowing how to read. We can read. Can we all read? Can we read? Huh? Our problem is our attitude towards him. Because, believe it or not, the concepts in this book, they're not complicated. They're not hard at all. Matter of fact, this is the most easiest word to obey in the world. Because you always get peace from it. Your flesh may not like it, but you always get peace from it. Amen. Always do. Settled heart. Amen. 
Flesh I ain't gonna like it, but who, who give a damn about flesh? But that inward man mm -hmm. that want to be perfect longs. Amen. Huh? Amen. Come on, Israel. Hallelujah. The frustration is because many of our attitudes are just simply wrong. Amen. Our attitudes block the imparting of healing and teaching that we need to receive. Because our attitudes have shaped us and molded us. Verse 12. For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you. You won't believe how many times I run into people who want to teach when they ain't even sit down long enough and shut up to even be taught. My son tells me all the time how he runs into these preachers. People want to come to him and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Chuck said, I tell you what, how about you just go ahead and go on back over to your church or something like this because you ain't ready for this. Hmm? Amen. I, I promise you, you don't want to have this conversation. Amen. Come on. I mean, he's been raised in this thing. What what a Christian gonna tell him about Jesus? Lydia, she'll just fight you down with it. She'll just take the word and hammer you down with it. I mean, she's up at college up there, and as soon as some of them Baptist preachers come out, they used to come and get Liddy just so Liddy can tie him up with the word. <laughs> I said, honey, you can stop that. Amen. They've been raised in this. Right. What is a Christian going to tell them? <laughs> Y'all understanding this? Oh, hallelujah. But I've got a lot of people who want to teach, but in order for you to teach, you need to sit down and be taught first. And I promise you, you got at least, before you even think about getting out there teaching anybody, you better set up under us here at least five years. Right. At least five years. Amen. At least five years. Because yeah. I promise you, you don't know what you think you know. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. You go learn something over here and you think we don't know. Uh oh. Same thing here. But look what he says. When you have need of one to teach you again, which be the first principles and the oracles, y'all, and I'll become such as have need of milk and not what? Strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of what? Righteousness, for he is a what? Okay. Babe. Isaiah said, who are you going to call to the most high? It's, it's them that are weaned from the breast. He's trying to tell you that you're still a baby. You're still on mama's milk. You ain't what you think you are. Because strong meat belong to them that are what? Full age. Watch this. Even those who by reason of use. What did they exercise? Their senses to discern both what? Good and evil. And even still today some of us are 20, 30, 40, 50 years old and still don't know what's good and what's evil. So how are you going to be in a position to teach anybody else if you even want to be in a position? You can tell that Sister Ashley was a, a woman that grew up fast in her teenage years. Is that right? Did she, Mama? When did she do all her growing? Height. Height. Physically, she grew up in her height fast in teenage years, right? She, done, she has done the same thing spiritually. How long you been with us, Ash? Five years, and I put up against anybody who been here twenty years, who been in the way twenty years, five years, and that's sister. Now she a sister; she'll stay in a place because she knows what the book says. But I think that's a shame if you have someone who has been in his way five years. And can run circles in holiness, righteousness, sanctification around you people who so-called have known Yahshua Hamashiach for 20 years. That's telling me it's a heart condition. That's what that's telling me. That's telling me that somebody got a heart like David and somebody got a heart like Solomon. Uh-oh. 
Well, Pastor, I don't know about it. I know you don't know about all that because you're still on the breast. Because we ain't playing games here. No, we ain't playing no games here. Oh, I mean to use that to provoke, too. That's amazing from a woman that would go and knock a man out in a heartbeat to, to a woman that would actually submit herself. That's some serious growth. That means the most high, there's a love affair going on there. Somebody loves Yah. And it's personal between her and the king. You don't mind if I use you as an example, do you? And of course, she'll sit there, man, I feel so bad. I feel so inadequate. Man, there's more I can do. Any saint will say that. We always look at ourselves, but the Bible says, don't you let your own lips praise, let another man do it. But her lifestyle proves where her heart is. And it can't be denied. Oh, hallelujah. Ain't that right, husband? Yes, sir. I didn't even hesitate. He didn't. Does she still have a long way to go? Man, I got a long way to go too. Yes, I do too, brother. Sir. And I'm not saying this to bring injury. I'm just showing you a physical, literal example of where our heart is. Because wherever your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And some of you, your treasure is still in this world. You love the world more than you love Yah. No wonder you ain't grown yet. No wonder you can't be trusted with these unsearchable riches. How long you been here, Sister Kathy? A year. I put up against anybody that's been here 15 years. Anybody out there who, all you who so called have known Yahshua Hamashik for 15 years, I put Sister Kathy up, gets you easy. That's the truth. Just like that. Bro, Rufus, how long you been with us, brother? A year. I put, a, I put, I put Bro Rufus against any man who's been in this 50 years. You notice I'm calling certain people because some of you, I'll be damned if I call. If I know, and I'm just a man. Oh, boy. I'll, see, you got to be a scholar of the book to know what I just said. If I know and I'm just a man, and my judgment is very small, what does he know? What is his judgment? Uh oh. That's why Pastor Dow says, Bring me your preachers. That means we ain't torn around. And remember, we just a man. That's it. Uh, if my judgment is not really all that, hey, then what? Ain't no big deal, then, is it? Uh, but know this: you're gonna be judged by him, and we're gonna find out if my words were right or not. But it's just gonna wait till you get in front of him to find out, though. Are we all perfect? No, but we're going on to, and our perfection is evidently easily seen, and you don't even have to discern this. That's not even a question. Do they love y'all? Are they really in it? Do they really truly love y'all? This is y'all with them? That's not it. That never comes up in your mind. Uh oh. It's not a good, wonderful testimony for live example sitting before us. We got five years. Another one year, another one year, and they had already already know how to discern good and evil. Then what's our problem? I'm telling you again, it's your attitude is a heart condition. 
Well, I know where I am. Then guess what? All men will be able to see your good works and glorify Yah, which is in heaven. So you ain't getting around this book. I hope you people out there are listening to me in internet land. You know, most people are glad that they actually came across a ministry like this. You know why? Because they want to be perfected. They want a relationship with the Father. They don't mind being saying, this is where you at. Good, now at least I know where I can go. I got a place I can start from, now I know where I can go. Oh, don't get me wrong. That's, that, this room is full of people who got, who got beautiful attitudes like that. that. Towards the Father. Growing. But they have understood what discernment is and who comes first in their heart and their life. That's just the truth. So many Israelites, even still to the Till today are not progressively, progressively, and aggressively pursuing this truth. Amen. Some of us just, mm -hmm. you know, we're here, we're just existing. We're just buying time. We're just, you know, existing until, you know, year after year after year, and then maybe we'll get on in the glory. Is that not the truth? Tell me I'm lying. And remember, I'm just a man. If you ain't hiding from me, you can forget about him. Up, oh, up, oh, let me throw this on there so I can bind y'all. Obey them. They had a rule on you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all right? What we're getting to is we have to use physical examples at times because some of us, we're so. Our, our, our vision is so impaired and our discernment is so off we can't even discern that unless somebody is physically used in front of us so we can see an example so we can have something to go I know we're not supposed to compare ourselves among ourselves but you ain't compare yourself with nothing now what that's why you hear me calling certain brothers names they come here to check us out and stuff and they ain't even perfected I promise you, a year from now, you're, I'm not gonna, you're not going to know the same pastor that you know now. Because every single year, myself and the brothers and sisters, we have grown. Amen. And we're going to keep on growing. Amen. And I'm telling you, I want to get to the point, I would love to be so perfect right now that he just take me like he did Enoch. I promise that's where my heart is. It would serve me fine. Wouldn't it be nice to get on up here like Enoch? Wouldn't it be nice to get on up here like Elijah? Would anybody take that? Take that? Anybody? Would anybody take that ticket today? Well, I don't know about me. I, just, I, I promise you. Ask me if I want to see you again. If he brings a chair down there and swoop me up. <laughs> Pass the left, y'all. I say here. Next. <laughs> I am tossed in the wind. Yeah. Finished. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Oh, yeah. The only thing I'm doing is, y'all notice, all I want to do is provoke Israel to good works. Yeah. That's all. But you got to get beat up by this word first. All right. Yeah, you're going get, to get beat up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know why? Because you learn obedience by the things that you suffer. And you know what disobedience does? It keeps you from learning through suffering. You watch a child when they know they're getting ready to get their rear end whooped. First thing they want to do is take off jet and run, don't they? First thing they want to do. They've been evil, wicked, and mischievous all the way up to that point. All of a sudden, they're apologetic. All for what? Not they want to change their attitude or their spirit. They just don't want no fire on their hide. They've been disobedient. Knowing they've been disobedient. But up until this point. Now all of a sudden they want to enter into obedience unto life. Amen. 
you ain't never seen submission and obedience like you've never seen before until that time hits. You know what the problem is? Their attitude towards it. Their, their, their discernment is impaired. They don't have the ability to discern right and wrong. They only get it when it's time for them to receive judgment. Hi, children. Raise your hand, brother Juan. You're trying to get by on me and trying to pull a fast one on me, ain't you? Everybody see you. You better put your hand up. <laughs> now, you understand? I mean, I love y'all enough to tell you to, to tell you the truth, but I can't live his life for you. I mean, I'm still gonna love you, believe me, regardless. I don't go around here and, and, and practice dissimulation because you don't live for y'all like I think you should. You never even hardly ever know what I think about you. But know this, you ain't getting by me. Just because I don't say nothing, I'm always looking for a way to strengthen. I realize the war and the fight. You know why? Because I'm a man too. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. But growth has been stifled and we're still unwinged babes, which we need to stop doing that. One reason, because we're snared by what we put as priorities in life. And we need to just really come to the reality. Y'all is not first in our life like we say. We got a lot of preachers in this world, but how many actually live it? Yeah. Think about it. We got a lot of preachers. Who, I mean, we got a lot of, lot of disciples, a lot of saints, but how many people actually live it? And you don't have to live on a community just to live it. I'm talking about, you, I see people who claim, but I don't see too much living. First Corinthians 9, 14, even so have Yahweh ordained that they which preach the gospel should also what? Live the gospel. You know, this is a very serious walk. This is a set apart walk. This is set apart life. Ultimately, when you do come this way, you're going to lose everything you are familiar with in your old past life. And you ain't got to worry about it. They'll fall off from you. I promise you. They ain't going to enjoy you one bit. You go do like they do. You be peace, old buddy, chum, pal, friends all day long. But you already telling me that you really truly don't care nothing about their soul if you'll let them stay in that condition without them really knowing who you really truly serve. Come on. Amen. The only reason why all my so-called friends and associates left me is because they didn't want to stop sinning. It's the message that corrects the people. Yes, and when the message is right, then the people will get right. Amen. And when the people don't want to be right, they'll leave from the message and go to where the wrong is. Amen. 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 Jesus knew the condition of his people. Huh? I want y'all to look at something, right? I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I'm going to read a few more scriptures. We're going to be done. All right? I'm going to go ahead and read these. 1 Corinthians 3, 1. Look. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. Now, his desire, he wanted to talk to you as unto spiritual. But look, but as unto cardinal, even as unto babes in what? Now, you know how you talk to a baby, right? I mean, little Sela, at times I raise my voice to Sela, you know what I mean, to get her attention and stuff like that and stuff. But you should see me talking to her today. And she, she getting her, she, she responding to everything you're saying now. She sure is. I said, you better not be screaming out there. You hear me? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Did you hear me? Mm -hmm. I'll get your hide. I don't know how she been doing today. Better? No, oh, she see she's doing real good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Huh? But look at look at this. But she's a babe though. Some of us have been in this long enough to not be no babes. Am I talking right? Yep. I got little lies right here. Oh, I better say it right. How old are you, son? 15, because you've been 13 forever. You know that, don't you? 
a 15 year old boy that I put up against any preacher in America now wait a minute he's 15 years old and maybe you need to probably sit down and listen to him kind of like the old people listened to Jesus when he was 12 Maybe he can teach you something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, this is letting you know that this doesn't have to depend on how old you are. That's right. Because the book also teaches us that aged men are not always wise. Right. But he's been brought up in this. Amen. Me and my son was talking earlier, and he says, boy, he said, the generation I was in, boy, he said, man, we was getting our rear ends beat every time, everywhere, all over the place around this community. He said, but this generation come behind y'all, you don't see nothing like that ever happen. Little one hit one. Does. I said, yeah, and they're going to be hellions when they get older, too. And I said, but that ain't like it with the Manites. They said, because they're in our generation. They were just younger. And I'm telling you, the parents don't get a discipline like they should. But don't worry about it. You're going to pay for it. We old people already know. We got it all figured out by virtue of experience. And even if you do discipline, he's still going to beat the hell out of you when he get old. <laughs> Scott, Scott told me one day, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get, get out of here before you get me. Meaning that she's going to get up to 18 years old before, before I get her. I said, I'm going to get your rear end. You watch. You're going to mess up one day. (laughs) Yeah, you will. I promise you, you will. No, I ain't either. Watch me. (laughs) But isn't that good to have that kind of attitude? Man, I ain't going to mess up. Uh -uh. Uh-uh. And and you'll be wise to ask Chuck and Lydia how I get. Look at her looking. My two try to put a guilt trip on me. <laughs> try to bring some philosophy on, on me. Try to come at me different angles. Dad, do you ever think you are abused? <laughs> <laughs> we have good conversations, though. We really, truly do. I told my two, I said, let me tell you all something about having children. Everything changes when you look down and see you. Everything changes. Whole perspective, life, outlook, the whole nine yards. And one of the roughest things to do is to, is to beat you. But if you don't, you're going to get beat for the rest of your days. <laughs> My two still living. Do y'all ever think the father for y'all chest chastisement? Yeah. Hannah, um, Elder Doug's daughter, wrote me a letter and just incl- and she's talking to me and she says, "You know what? I I think I thank y'all for my dad's tough love." She called it tough love. No, that was extreme love. It was tough love because she didn't like the way she was being loved. But she's looking at her generation and looking at where she's at and looking where these people are, telling people without reservation, my dad raised me right. And I'm telling you, he was tough. And I always say, you look at the people who their parents wasn't their best friends, but they were their mother and father. You look at the ones who cared more about their welfare enough to correct them and chase them and see where they at today and see all the ones who got by with their little deceiving, mischievous self and see where they at. It's a sad testimony and a sad report. I said to my two this morning, I said, when y'all have children, y'all going to let them get by? Oh, no. And he ain't saying that because no parent wants to chasten their children. No, sir. 
I promise you they don't. It's the most. Yeah. That's a rough thing. It's a rough thing. But boy, if you don't. But look at the father. The father, he wants to love her. He don't want to chase it up. But boy, you see, he will not hold any reservations. Look what he did with us as a nation. We've been getting our rearings whooped for a long time, Israel. And mind you, Yah's love. I thank him for it. Let me go ahead and move on. I got to put something out there for all you parents who don't know how to raise no children. Y'all see these children today. Anybody ever see this generation today? I seen, I seen a little boy pull, pull a fist up to his mama. You know what I did, don't you? I did like this. And I, I, I was preaching to myself. I said, I said, I said, Pastor, these are goyims. <laughs> And these are what goyims do. These are not Israelites. So you leave these goyims alone. And I go, <sighs> I had to convince myself. <sighs> you leave these Gentiles alone. <laughs> A glory to the king. Verse 2, I fed you with milk and not with meat. Hitherto you are not able to bear it, neither are you able. Neither now are you able. For you are yet what? Cardinal, whereas there's among you envy, strife, and divisions. Are you not cardinal walk as what? That's how you know people ain't never grown up to full age. They still own milk. It's a pretty bad idea when you got people 40, 50 years old acting like they're 15, 16, 17 years old. 1 Peter 2 1, wherefore laying aside all malice. What are you supposed to do with malice? And guile, what we're supposed to do is lay aside guile too, right? And hypocrisies and envyings and all evil speakings. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If so, that you have tasted that Yahweh is gracious. See, it's the right perspective where you look at things. See, the Bible teaches us you're going to know the tree by the fruit that it bears. Is that right? Now, this is the problem. And this is also the solution, Okay. Matthew 6, 31. Take therefore no thought, saying, What ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, or wherewithal ye shall be clothed. For after these things do the Gentiles seek. See, the Gentiles are always worrying about everything in life. How are they going to make ends meet do all this other stuff? But Jesus didn't say it. Look what he says. For your heavenly Father know that ye have need of these things. But seek ye first. But do what? Seek ye first. And see, when you first, you put, it, you put everything... First, but him, you, you can't have the blessings of the word. You all right, brother Alex? You ain't mad at me, are you, brother? I wouldn't care if you were. Anyone make a difference than me, man. A personal problem, man, between you and the father. I ain't going to get you mad, man. I'm going to get some deliverance, get them demons cast out of you. Brother Alex said, man, you said me, I ain't said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and so the Carol said, Oh, I understand. I get it all the time. But the Father wants you to seek Him first. You know why? Because He knows best. And look what He says. Because He knows that, look, the Father knows, Heaven Father knows you have all needed these things. He said, But seek ye first the kingdom of Yah and His righteousness. Then He says, Look, all these things will be added unto you. But see, what we do is we get ideals in our head and we're thinking that we're doing this way, and yet we're still not receiving the blessings. That means your discernment is messed up. You got a way you see it, and the book says it another way. And the blessings that should be coming is not coming because you're not meeting his conditions. Hallelujah. And the mind of the Gentiles and the mindset, hey, it's all about them. Isn't that right? Second Chronicles seven fourteen says, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my Faith. What did David do over in the Psalms? I mean, with those words he put together, there's no way that another man on this earth could put those words together like he did. I mean, we can learn from his example because he put the spotlight or spotlights on him. 
would humble themselves and pray and look what he says and turn from their wicked ways. Watch this. Notice, he wants us to do what? Turn from our wicked way. We've already repented, but our problem is refusing to turn from our wicked ways. That's our problem. You know what's tearing us up? Refusing to acknowledge our wicked ways. It's not that we're not his children, saints. You are his children. But like a bunch of mischievous children, you refuse to turn from your wicked ways. I say it again. You are Israel. You are his children. But your problem is refusing to acknowledge your wicked ways. That's why you have to ask the father like David did. Because some of us, we're blinded to ourselves. Uh, he's just the hardest person to see is you. <laughs> hardest person for me to see is me. Amen. You don't believe me? Watch this. How many people you ever done wrong? Amen. Yeah, when did you do it? What did you do? Huh? I remember when I first asked that question, I ain't never done nobody wrong. You lying devil. Let's ask somebody else. And then the first thing you do is do what? Go back to the first principles. Start arguing. Envy and strife. Amen. Bottom line, I've done people wrong. You have too. And they have done me wrong. But what we do is we only look at what we've done, what people have done to us. And we all been victims. And so we had to respond because we've been victims. So we can protect ourselves from doing other people wrong. You liar. Isn't that true? Oh, yeah, you've done people wrong. Yeah, you have. Sometimes you've done people wrong with the intent to injure. I'll show you how we do people wrong all the time. And because we, our discernment is so impaired, we don't even see it. We withhold good from them that are do good. You know why? Because I don't like them. Watch it. Hallelujah. Yeah, there have been people you knew that had a need. And you were able to fulfill that need. But yet because you had malice in your heart towards them, knowing full well the Holy Spirit spoke to you. And you chose to ignore his voice, thinking you getting by. But remember judgment at the, at the eternal kingdom. The thought and the intent of a man's heart. Because them to know to do good and do it not. And that's sin. And you know what? All manner of sin and blaspheme shall be forgiven among men. But you know what? You do that over and over again and you never repent for that sin. You know why? Because you're not dis your discernment is impaired. You don't think you've done nothing wrong because it's not clearly manifested for others to see. So that you will know that you're not getting by, you had better repent and turn from that wicked way. See? Y'all see it? Y'all see it now? And you know what? You ain't going to see this way. You have to be showed. That's why he chose by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Isn't this beautiful? What you should be doing is saying, Father, it's just a flat out truth. Man, that's just a flat out. I'm going to show you the right attitude and the right response to that. Okay, The right attitude and response is not. Sitting there simmering, getting mad, huffing and puffing, manifesting but holding back the manifestation. <laughs> the right attitude of that is, Father, that is just the truth. That is the truth. And then, thank you for showing me my wicked way. And you know the reason why? 
Because it is the goodness of Yah that leads thee to repent. You should thank the Father that he didn't leave you in that condition, but he has made a way of escape. Because truth is, hadn't we all done that before? Women are notorious for it. Ain't that right, sisters? They're notorious for it. When they hold something, they hold it a long time. That's why they get so tore up. I'm not exempting man. I'm just, I said it. Not so I can hurt you women. I said it so I could help you because I know you're the weaker vessel. And when you hate, you hate all the way. You don't play around. <laughs> Men, they're hypocrites in hate. Yeah. Women, when they hate, they hate, boy. It goes past the test, past disgust. If I never talked about this, you'd probably went to judgment with it. Hallelujah. And would have been showed at judgment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I think the Holy Spirit is just good. Amen. I really truly do. Amen. See, the reason why the ministry of deliverance is so powerful, because it actually touches us in places that we don't see ourselves as clear as we should. And what I told y'all years, many, many years ago, we have the wrong attitude towards repentance. Anytime you discover that you have been in a wicked way or you've been showed your condition and your sin, your iniquity, rather than sitting back and doing like Adam and Eve, running and hiding, and y'all has to come and ask, where you at? Ain't that what we do? You should just run on out there to the Father and fall on Him. I'm wretched and I'm done. And you should say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, we receive repentance the wrong way. You should say, Hallelujah. Because you know what? He didn't even allow you to stay in that condition without knowing. He's bringing you a state to repentance so that you can get closer to Him. Mercies are new every morning. See, it's the attitude. It depends on how you look at it. But if you want to protect yourself from Yah, you will respond the wrong way. If you never had the opportunity to repent, how would you ever know how wicked you were? Well, it seems like I'm always wicked. Well, you ain't going to get an no argument out of me with that. Because I live in this body. I live in this flesh, and I know it's pretty vile and pretty wicked. Now, if you're looking for justification, you've gone down there to this Missionary Baptist Church down there. That'll make you feel good. But I'm going to tell you right now, old Pastor Dow, man, that, that, that's an old wicked man in there. And that booger tried to rear his head up, not some of the time, all the time. Now, he's getting a little disciplined now because he know I beat the fight of him with his word. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. Glory to the king. All right, let's go to James. But anyway, he says, I would, then would you hear from heaven? He said, I will forgive their sin and I would heal their land. James 4, 7, submit yourself to Yah, resist the devil, he'll flee from you. What's the order though? Draw now to Yah, he'll draw now to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, purify your hearts, you what? Double-minded. Romans 16, verse 17 through 20. Now I beseech you, brethren, y'all ready for this one? Look at this. Mark them that cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine. Y'all know the way we preach and teach here, right? If anybody claim to be part of us and they teach us something other than that, what are we supposed to do? Mark them. We, we, we're marking them because they're preaching stuff contrary to the doctrine. Look what it says. Which ye have learned, and then it says this, your action should be avoid them. Y'all hearing this? Look at this now. For they that are such serve not Yahshua HaMashiach, but their own bellies. And by, watch this, good words 
and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. You ever seen them people who they say all the right things, their attitude looks like it's the right way, and the whole time they're disobedient, ain't even thinking about trying to serve the God. Y'all will even be much less being part of an assembly. Good words and fair speeches. They use those good words and fair speeches because they want you to receive a personality rather than the person they're supposed to be in Christ. They want you to pay more attention to this nice, kind, rebellious person. Man, if y'all think preaching is that easy, come up here and deliver this message. This is a doozy. But you got to be able to discern before you can go on to the next level of get really getting off into deliverance. Look what this it says. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. But yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And the Yah of peace shall bruise the Hasatan under your feet shortly. The grace of Yahshua HaMashiach be with you all. Amen. Last one, 2 Corinthians 2.11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. See, there's a lot of devices still of Satan that we're plenty ignorant of. But we should not be ignorant of his devices. I mean, think about that. Come on now. Hmm? It's hard to do good against those who all the time take advantage of you, despitefully use you, and isn't it? That flesh shows up, don't it? But if it's in your hand to do good, what are you supposed to do according to the word? But if you always had the word in your heart and mind that says, whatever you do unto men, do it heartily as unto Yahweh and not unto men, then you'd be all right then, wouldn't you? But because you despise that person so much, boy, it just burns you to do good towards him, don't it? You got problems. You got some serious problems. And you got to make sure that that problem is not ruling your life. Am I making sense? Make sure that problem is not ruling your life so that you can keep yourself in good stead with the Father. Because you always want to be in a position to where anytime you call up him, you can be healed. You always want to be a position, and when you pray, you're heard. Yes, Amen. Am I making sense? Amen. You don't want to be walking around well, with your face looking like somebody hit your side head with a sledgehammer. Amen. And I'm going to finish on this example right here. Come on. All right? Come on. You could be going through something, Come on. and you're so selfish. And you're so inconsiderate of others' well-being, you would rather drag down the whole entire environment so they can feel your pain and your hurt. Mm. Wow. Come on. That's, right. Come on. That's pretty idolatrous. Yeah. Yeah. It is. I mean, I your brothers and sisters do not deserve carrying that weight that you got. We're supposed to bear each other burdens, not attitudes. Come on. Come on. So fulfill you the y'all the law of y'all. Isn't that right? But for you to turn around and sit and have, and have something going on internally, we got all this deliverance available. And you carry it around. Y'all ain't never walked in a room and, and all of a sudden, uh-oh. Yes, That's your spiritual discernment. Right. Oh, you walk in a room, everything is fine until you turn around, that person turn around and look at you. Oh, God. Inside, you getting jacked up. Ooh-wee. My question is, what kind of person are you? I mean, well, instead of carrying all that mess around, how about just instead of just festering, allowing this stuff to grow like cancer, how about you just get some deliverance since it's all available? Amen. How about you seek out some counsel from those who understand? Why drag around the whole environment because you ain't happy? What kind of selfish person are you? I'm talking about your little personal thing. I'm not talking about getting upset. You know, because something ain't going right. Come on. I'm talking about you got your own little personal thing, so you got to make everything bad because you feeling bad. That's pretty bad condition. Yes. That's a wicked way. Amen. And that wicked way must be repented of. Yeah. Amen. 
or he, you are going through something, your brother and sister hadn't done nothing to you whatsoever at all. They come over, they can sense that you, you're going through. They try to say a kind word and you bite their head off. Does it happen? Yeah. All and not once be named among us. You have bad hair day, so everybody got to have one. Ooh, boy. Put a head covering on, you ain't got to worry about no bad hair day. Amen. You're a man, you cut that long John Bon Jovi junk, you don't have to worry about no bad hair day. Ain't that right, Tyler? <laughs> Am I talking about wicked ways? Yeah. Are they real ways? Yeah. Do we deal with these ways? Yes. Are they real? Yes. You can't see them. You know, you can say, okay, I can identify that weak way, but you know it's there. These are the things that we have to be purified from and purged from. Because we can't take this stuff into his kingdom. So we have an opportunity to get it right while today is today. And while you're hearing this, it's not hard in your heart. I know Pastor Dollar ain't got the best delivery method, but still, a lot of people like it. They show up. They, they man, I'm not, the, I'm not a, what you call a likable, lovable person. Not preaching. Not unless you like Joshua and Caleb. You call Dathan and the Baron, boy, I'm your worst enemy. You got a Joshua and Caleb spirit, you're like, man, I, I like your words. I love the way you talk, man. You, 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 I like that, brother. But you got a car date and bear attitude. I'm your worst enemy. So since Pastor Dallas never saw anyone bleeding because of the word being preached, then the problem is not me. Yes, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't like the way you say it. I don't like the way you look. What are we going to do about it? I don't like how you're here. What are we going to do about it? <laughs> now, if we all go around with chips on our shoulders, man, the kingdom's going to be tore up then, isn't it? Yes, We're going to get to the kingdom. Hallelujah. No, but I love all the Israelites. I hope y'all get this. Remember, it's us against the devil. Amen. And the devil's working in us, so let's get him out. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hope y'all enjoyed this, but discernment, remember, it's an attitude. Is learning the attitude of learning or knowing what's right from wrong. Wicked ways, a lot of times we have to be showed them. Don't be afraid to go to a brother or sister who you know that is mature to ask them, hey, do you got any insight on this? You need to be helpers one to another in the fear of y'all. And let's tell the truth. Sometimes we're so prideful, we don't want nobody. We don't go to nobody because you know why? We don't want them to know that we got troubles. Let me tell you something. Everybody sitting in this room got troubles. Every single one of them. No, oh yeah we do Amen. Big time troubles yes, sir. And knowing that Man you know how close of a, and a cohesive Of a unit we can be Amen. Do I need to know everything about you No uh uh-uh. uh go talk to somebody else <laughs> I'll take the weighty stuff to Get all the other stuff to everybody else Amen. Amen. Hallelujah Amen. Oh and all you people that are coming here Don't be looking for no special one-on-one prayer time with Pastor Dow. I am not about to go pray for 170 people separate. That's why we got all these saints around here that know how to pray. Amen. Amen. So pray one for another. Isn't that right? Yeah. They know how to cast out devils. They know how to heal. Yeah, yeah, amen. 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 Lord to the King. Glory. Hope y'all enjoyed today's message. Amen. Hope y'all got something out of it. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for these words of true praise. These saints sink deep down in our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Y'all be encouraged, saints. King coming. Look forward to seeing y'all in about, what, a week and a half? About two weeks. About a week and a half, huh? Week and a half. Look forward to seeing y'all at God so y'all can learn something. Good seeing you, brother.
Uh-oh, look at him looking. 